It didn't work. Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I B. DeGangie with the media speaks and being outwitted by the lowly Windows media player. I hope that's not the direction that the show is going to go in. If so, I'm doomed. Uh, friends, you're listening to the correct views. Uh, theme music by Passing Time. Friends, there is uh, a, a lot to get to as I do my commentary here for the media speaks. There's quite a bit to get to. Um, I wish most of it were better news, of course, than it actually is, but it's not. Um, regardless of which side of the political field that you may find yourself on, whether you're into the, uh, the false dichotomy between that of the uh, Democrats and the Republicans, or maybe you're a little deeper into it. Maybe you're a libertarian, constitutionalist. God forbid, maybe you're Green Party, socialist. This matters to everyone. Because America, even if it was to be a socialist America, God forbid, America gets a lot less say in everything that not only happens in the world, but that happens regarding its own ability to do things like trade and um, even making our own laws will now be greatly affected. We've lost a bit of sovereignty. We've lost a great bit of self-rule with the passing of TPP. Uh, I've been warning about it. Um, I guarantee Alex Jones of InfoWars, who wrote the article that I'm about to talk about here, would agree. He's been working on it. Uh, Drudge. Some of the best minds in the political spectrum today have warned about this. And unfortunately, not enough of us did enough to stop it. And uh, if you can tell by the tone of my voice that I'm not real happy right now, it's because I'm not. Our country just took another great big step backwards. One of the most devastating blows, Alex writes, and this is an Alex Jones article, he wrote this, to U.S. sovereignty since the country's founding was dealt today as the Senate handed uh, President Obama his Trans-Pacific Partnership victory. Despite massive opposition from the American people, Tea Party Republicans, and a majority of Democrats, even his own party, again, I'm talking to Democrats here, he stabbed you in the back too. Obama was granted fast-track authority by a 60-38 to 38 vote. Fast-track means that there are members of Congress that will vote on this without reading it. You can't tell me that was ever envisioned in any documents that's been put forth, forth by the Founding Fathers, even if they're somewhat questionable like Hamilton was. He is not somebody that would have been in favor of this. Sections of the TPP published by WikiLeaks have revealed the treaty's vast influence over multiple areas, including individual rights, internet freedom, and the rule of law itself. Unelected corporate boards and the president can now wield unprecedented power almost over almost every aspect of human activity. We have given much of our sovereignty and our liberty over to other nations that are also involved in this so-called treaty. For one thing, how is it that anything can usurp the Constitution? Second of all, once WikiLeaks published, even as much as they did, and we covered it extensively here, I gotta ask how anybody could be in favor of this, knowing what it is that's been reported by so many of us out here. It says if you read, write, publish, think, listen, dance, sing, or invent, if you farm or if you consume food, that would be eating food for you hip hop fans, if you're ill now or may one day be ill, the TPP has you in its crosshairs. And that was by WikiLeaks' Julian Assange, and he's quite right. Secret TPP chapters regarding immigration also grant President Obama an even greater ability to erode the country's southern border. Obama will be able to finalize all three of the Obama trade deals without any congressional input, nor its Breitbart. Do you realize what that's saying, friends? Among other things, we're going to have an even bigger illegal immigration problem from the South than we have now. 
It says the TPP, which covers 12 countries and more than 40% of the world's economy, again, all the people that say that a one world government is uh, in, in the minds of crazy people and tinfoil hat wearers might want to notice that this does encompass 40% of the world's economy. It'll place North America under the same global government structure as the European Union. If you want to know how that went, ask Greece. It's going very, very badly. Look up what a Grexit is. You can even look it up on my channel. I covered it last show. It says, uh, in, the, in the EU, laws are increasingly crafted outside of public influence. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. Friends, this is from time.com. We don't do a lot of things about time, on time, but I got to say, and uh, we've got tons of stories to get to. I can tell you from firsthand experience how bad these storms were. Now, uh, again, it's not caused by global warming. I don't believe any of that BS. It's not caused because man's warming the planet. I'm simply reporting on a, a, on a phenomenon here. The storms that happened to rip through the area were so bad that I can speak firsthand that I bought a house that needed some repairs. Uh, within seven days and before I could get it insured, before you ask, uh, somebody on InfoWars asked me about this, before I could get it insured, the, uh, the roof now has two very large holes in it and I've got water damage in one of the properties. Anybody in Ohio or anybody that wants to uh, help with uh, repairs, uh, get a hold of me. I'm almost literally underwater. Uh, literally. SOS. Help. Help. Um, I bought two houses to rent. One of them is doing phenomenal and one of them is doing terrible. And a lot of it is caused by the storms. So I thought it would be uh, rather ironic, if nothing else, to go ahead and cover them on my show. <clears throat> Since they've already taken up so much of my time, I might as well go straight to the uh, jugular here. Again, anybody that knows anything about uh, contracting, I'm trying to get this roof fixed. Severe storms leave nearly 400,000 without power on the East Coast. That would be after leaving somebody without a roof in Ohio. That's someone being me. Powerful storms that plowed through eastern Pennsylvania after destroying my roof in Ohio. New Jersey and Connecticut down trees and power lines, nearly, leaving nearly 400,000 customers without electricity and disrupting mass transit service in both states Wednesday. In Pennsylvania, Pico says more than 165 homes and businesses were without power. Chester and Delaware counties were hardest hit and officials said the full service might not be restored until the weekend. I guess the point of me covering that, and there's a lot more at time, you know how time articles are, they go on for a hundred years, um, make sure you stock up on food. Make sure you have some way to at least generate some kind of heat, even if it's an indoor fireplace, and uh, make sure it's properly ventilated, but don't give a rat's ass whether it's legal or you're trying to survive an emergency, and not everyone can afford generators. Um, make sure you are prepared, because it looks like it's going to be quite a year for storms. And I'm not going to stay on the topic, but again, since I got hosed by it, I figure I would put the word out. Uh, TheGuardian.com <clears throat> Hollywood and Downwinders still grapple with nuclear fallout. This is a bit of a nuclear update here. Um, and not so much Fukushima this time, which is normally what I do once a month with the uh, massive Fukushima update. You'll see them on the site. Um, no, this is a little different than that. This is uh, things nuclear that are not necessarily, or not, I should say, not at all ca caused by Fukushima, our usual nuclear topic here. Um, listen to this and listen to it well, because a new cold, cold war is starting here. And for those of you that might not know what that is, younger viewers, um, it's the nightmare that was prominent through most of the years between the end of World War II in, I uh, wonder what, 46, wasn't it? To um, 90 or so, was this almost certainty that they were going to launch nuclear missiles, uh, the U.S. and Russia at each other. And to, to some degree, a lot of that fear has died down, but not significantly, not to the level that a lot of us would like to see it have happened. And I think it's important that we visit this topic because I don't think it's being reported on enough that some of the errors that seemed like they took place, you know, in the 50s and who cares about it now, 
in terms of a nuclear element that damages your health by giving you cancer, which most of the people that I'm about to report on got, <clears throat> these radionuclides, for the most part, are as dangerous now as they were in 1954. And they will be that dangerous in 2054 and 2154 and just as dangerous in 2254. A lot of them will be this dangerous for millions of years. And these are things that we have unleashed on our planet. And uh, you can't even say they were created by God. These toxins never existed before man created them with things like uh, nuclear bomb testing. And since it looks like, unfortunately, we are heading headlong into another Cold War that could result in nuclear war, I think it's important that we address exactly uh, what the ramifications of this could be. There's a photograph on here at theguardian.com. It says, the photograph shows John Wayne with his two young sons <clears throat> during a break-in filming of The Scent of the Conqueror. That was a big-budget blockbuster about Genghis Khan, and it was shot in the desert in Utah in 1954. I gotta say, it's one of the worst movies of all time. It says it was one of Hollywood's most famous miscastings, to say the least. Uh, the Duke could do many things, but play a 13th century Mongol, that would be Asian, warlord was not one of them. Film geeks such as myself consider it to be one of the great turkeys in Hollywood's golden age. That's because it is. It says there's another dark reason that it endures in film lore, and we've talked about it briefly here. We're going to get in a little more in depth now. The photograph above hints at it. Wayne clutches a black metal box while another man appears to adjust the controls. Wayne's two teenage sons, Patrick and Michael, gaze at it, clearly intrigued, perhaps a bit anxious, as they should be. The actor himself appears relaxed, leaning on Patrick, his hat in a jauntry angle. Uh, the box, which rests on a patch of scrub, looks unremarkable, but it is, in fact, a Geiger counter. It is said to have cracked so loudly that Wayne thought that it was broken. Do you realize how radioactive an area has to be to get those kinds of sounds? Christelle and I know well from listening to Fukushima updates right after it first happened. There was a gentleman in Canada that stayed on it from day one. I wonder where he went. Moving into different clumps of rock and sand produced the same result. The star, by all accounts, shrugged it off. The government had detonated atomic bombs at a test site in Nevada, but that was more than 100 miles away. Officials said that the canyons and dunes around St. George, a remote, dusty town where the film was shooting, was completely safe. Completely safe. Most of the crew and cast have died of horrible cancers. They've suffered diseases their whole life that never went away. Doesn't that sound a lot like what you're being told now about Fukushima? Doesn't that sound like what you were told about Three Mile Island, why you eat Hershey candy that's radiated due to exactly where it's made at? Don't you wonder why this stuff has half-lives of millions of years, and yet it's somehow okay to eat Hershey? It can't be. Well, this is another aspect of that. This is, this is what nuclear brings. And now that we're looking at a, another Cold War with Russia, this is the kind of horror stories that we're looking at. So don't zone out here. It says, last week, half a century later, Rebecca Barlow, it's a nurse practitioner at the Radiation Exposure Screening and Education Program, RECEP. It operates from the Dixie Regional Medical Center in St. George, and now a prosperous little city with an airport, leafed through her patients' records. She says more than 60% of this year's patients are new. Mostly breast and thyroid. Also some leukemia, colon, and lung. Oh, it's not important, Sam. Why are you talking about this? Well, maybe because the same things that result from nuclear war, even a small one, result in breast cancer, thyroid cancer, um, leukemia, that's blood cancer, colon cancer. That means uh, you get to lose your colon and maybe never be able to use the bathroom without having to do it into a plastic appliance. And lung cancer, lose your ability to breathe, spit up blood, can't run, can't jog, can't walk upstairs. A lot of times it'll go through your lymphatic system and cause you great pain for decades. So this is a story about cancer. About how the United States turned swaths of desert radioactive during the Cold War and then denied it. 
bequeathing a medical mystery which to this day haunts Hollywood and royal Mormon communities, of course this being in Utah, and raises a thorny question. How much should you trust the government? It's gone into your DNA, said Michelle Thomas, who's 63, an outspoken advocate for the so-called downwinders, which is a name given to the tens of thousands of people exposed to fallout. I've lost count of the friends that I've buried. I'm not patriotic because my government lied to me. Hollywood is set to remember its own cameo in the story with next year's 50th anniversary of the release of The Conqueror. The film with allegedly killed Wayne plus leading lady Susan Hayward, they were the biggest names in Hollywood at their time. Director Dick Powell and dozens of other cast and crew members. In the meantime, there will be another anniversary. This summer, it will be 70 years since the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, of course, when we dropped atomic bombs on Japan. It says, the Manhattan Project scientists conducted the first atomic tests in great secrecy in 1945 in New Mexico. After the Second World War, testing shifted to the southern Pacific Ocean on the grounds of public safety. But the war in Korea and escalating rivalry in the Soviet Union prompted a shift back to the U.S. mainland, where we had tested atomic bombs on our own people. We used to hand out leaflets telling them to look up at the sky and enjoy the colors in the show. It gave them cancer. Many times it blinded them. Our own people. Look up downwinders, people. You, you can find this information easily. The Atomic Energy Commission, an agency with near-Olympian powers, which ran the nuclear program, selected a government-owned bombing and gunnery range in Nevada, partly because winds would blow radiological hazards away from Las Vegas and Los Angeles, towards virtually uninhabitable land downwind to the west, home to ranches and Mormon communities. From 51 to 62, the AEC detonated more than 100 bombs, that would be nuclear bombs, sending huge pinkish plumes of radioactive dust across the stony valleys and canyons of southern Utah and northern Arizona. It gave each shot names like Annie, Eddie, Humboldt, and Badger the official advice, enjoy the show. Again, they told you to enjoy the show. They told little kids to go outside and enjoy the show. Your best action is not to be worried about fallout, said an official AEC booklet. Families and lovers would drive to vantage points for the spectacle, then drive home as ash rafted down on their communities, and it was considered a cheap date. Do you understand that? Our government encouraged our own citizens to watch a nuclear bomb detonation and then sent them home radiated, telling them that they were safe. And yet, you're going to eat seafood now. Uh, I'm pretty sure Christelle is smoking cigarettes and lighting incense, so I don't know any better. You, you might as well at the end of the day. I mean, if you're not going to do anything, well, she's going to kill me. You're not going to do anything whatsoever to even care about these kinds of things. These are the kinds of things that are still going on. These same people that poisoned the downwinders are the same people telling us that these kinds of things are safe now. And it's no safer now than it was them. It goes on that at first, the local press cheered the chance to beat the Russians and be part of history. Hello, Christelle. Hello. Spectacular atomic explosions, it says. It means that progress in defense, no cause for panic, said the editorial in the Desert News. Clint Mosher, a columnist, said he never saw a prettier sight. It was like a letter from home or the firm handshake of someone that you admire and trust. It was the government setting off nuclear bombs and poisoning you. Um, Claudia Peterson, 60, another downwinder, gave her a memory. We were Mormons and very patriotic, perfect guinea pigs. We weren't going to question anything. It was impossible to believe that our government would consider us expendable, just like they're doing now when they're not testing your food. Peterson lost a father, sister, daughter, nephew to diseases she attributes, at least in part, to radiation. I'm going to hurry through this here. Eleven bombs were detonated in 1953, including the 32 kiloton uh, Harry bomb, which was later dubbed the Dirty Harry. Thousands of sheep died. It got into the ground, got into the water, and is still affecting people now. 
It says, um, as years passed and the cast fell sick, it acquired a darker reputation. Powell got lymph cancer and died in 63. It got him pretty quickly, said Norman, the same year that Pedro Amarin Diaz, a Mexico actor, Mexican actor who had played Khan's right-hand man, Jamuga, shot himself after being diagnosed with terminal cancer because he was so miserable from it. And then Hayward, who was gorgeous, played the Tatar princess. She died of brain cancer in 75. That had to have been a remarkable death. I'm so happy it was so safe for her. She must have just enjoyed every second of that. That's the, that's the kind of safety warnings you get from your government. It says approximately 100,000 people who lived in the three-state fallout zone north and east of the testing site are more likely to have been affected than even the Hollywood visitors. For years, they inherited contaminated dust and ingested contaminated food and milk. It still adheres to milk, by the way. In the early 1960s... <coughs> Multiple cases of childhood leukemia, again blood cancer, in children, and adult cancers began to appear. A shocking novelty because Mormons who shun alcohol and tobacco typically have low cancer rates. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 84 compared those in the fallout area with other Mormons who found leukemia rates to be five times higher. Doesn't it seem kind of strange to you that it would be five times higher among people that never smoked? And it, it's it's the same thing we're seeing now. They keep telling us, there's more here at the Guardian. They keep telling us that everything is safe and everything is okay and it's not. And I'm laughing because I'm getting the evil eye before I do the second half of our update. Are you going to say that you were not, before all of our hundreds of listeners here, that you were not smoking anything at all? No. Oh, well, if she's going to say it to that many people. I was washing people, dishes, actually. You put the, you put, you burn an incense to light dishes? No, or to, to wash dishes? To cover up our smell. Oh, well, see, there you go. All right, if she's going to tell that many people she's not smoking, I mean, it's, it's kind of the behind-the-scenes queen. Uh, before, uh, before, yeah, before it's news.com. Again, a little bit of humor, a little bit of levity, because every thing we're talking about now is just miserable. It, it's sad. It's something you don't want to hear about. So, I mean, it's sort of my job. You trust me to give you this kind of news, but it doesn't mean I have to give it to you without any humor whatsoever. I want to hang myself. Huh? Anyway, Christelle is saying she's doing well on her quest to quit smoking. Uh, this is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. If you want to read great fiction, if you want to read great poetry, make a look up Mike McLaughlin on Facebook. Let him know you heard about him from the correct views and get ready. You're going to... You're going to really enjoy his writing, whether it's vampire fictional things or whether it's um, uh, political rants. He does it all, and he does it well. U.S. nuclear target map. Do you live in a death zone? As I look at this in Ohio, yes, I do. It is the editor's note on this. The next world war will be as inevitable as the other two. Unfortunately, not all of us are aware that it is only a question of time. Some of us think that the mutually assured destruction, which means if Russia attacks us, we attack them, they both die. Some people think that that knowledge will keep us, the Russians, the Chinese, or other nuclear powers away from using the nuclear might. Says the only hope is that I won't live long enough for the next world war and neither will my son. So here are some things you can do regarding uh, if there was to be, God forbid, a nuclear exchange between uh, any of the countries in question or even other countries we may not know of. <laughs> it says, as a country, we need to take action on every time another country tries to build a nuke. The more countries with nukes, the higher the probability. Two. As individuals, we need to protect ourselves and our families. If you don't live in a risk area, you don't need to bug out. In fact, bugging out can get you in the target of a nuclear area, which can get you killed. And there's a map here. It looks like if you live anywhere that has anything but corn in it, you're doomed. Uh, really, and there's no place that has any fun in it that you can live in. That's pretty much what the map says. Uh, if you live near a nuclear target, evacuate. That's easier said than done. Although I will say if bombs start flying, you would be well to get out of there no matter what. Um, when the electronics stop working. And again, I, I'm somebody that would like to see cell phones go the way of the dinosaur. But this is a lot bigger and a lot worse. I'm not going to be ambiguous. I would love to see like no cell phones work for like a month. I'd be like the happiest person that ever lived. 
This, however, is something different. Since when your electronics start work, stop working, most experts agree that the next nuclear war will start with at least an EMP. Now keep in mind, there are non-nuclear EMPs as well. And look up the correct views, non-nuclear EMP. I did an entire report on it. If one of the nuclear powers blasts a nuclear weapon 275 miles above the U.S., it will produce an electromagnetic pulse that will basically send us, the Canadian and Mexicans, back to the Dark Ages. This is exactly what our enemy wants, to disrupt our communication and our ability to retaliate at full capacity. Again, that's not going to work very well because a lot of our nuclear establishments are protected against such things. It would make life hell for the average American, but it's not going to stop a counter-strike. But I digress. It says, I have something that you need to watch. It's much better than I am at explaining it. Watch and learn what you should fear the most, and it's in a video on the site. And it tells what an EMP would affect, and how you can protect your electronics, car, mobile phones, etc. Two, when you hear of the news that another nuclear bomb has just detonated, it doesn't matter if it's the U.S., Russia, or China. I'm thinking that when a nuclear bomb explodes, we face three possibilities. A nuclear war, which may involve the U.S. Nuclear terrorism, which means that the first explosion may be followed by another four. Or human error, like happened in uh, 1956, of course, when the U.S. Air Force accidentally dropped two atomic bombs on North Carolina. If it's the last case, then yes, you're probably evacuated in vain, but the risk is worth the effort. It says when a nuclear bomb explodes a few miles away and doesn't kill you, if you're not killed in the first few minutes, you can live a lifetime or you can die of cancer in the next few years. The longer that you expose yourself to radiation in the radioactive area, the lowest the chances are to survive. Take your family and leave as fast as you can, which would be a good idea to, at least if you can't afford to do the rest, I guess, protect your car from an EMP. Um, I would also add that um, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your mouth, try not to eat or drink anything, because all of that will bring radionuclides into your body. If they're on your hands, do not touch your eyes, do not touch your mouth, because a lot of it, some of it can. But a lot of it can't get through your skin, but you'll put it directly into your system if you do that. No matter how bad your eyes burn, no matter how bad you want to wipe your mouth, don't do it. Free advice from the correct views. Um, when we declare war on another nuclear power or vice versa, it says, of course, nobody would be stupid enough to announce a nuclear war ahead of time. But with leaders like Obama, you never know. And I agree. It says, out of curiosity, uh, Ken Jokston wrote, that the maps would reveal nuclear targets in the U.S., and they posted them there for interest. So uh, make sure you definitely look them up, friends. Uh, very, very useful information there as well. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. We've got two more stories to get to. I just want to remind you that uh, you want to go and go to StickerJunkie.com. See these? These awesome stickers are from my band, and they were made by StickerJunkie.com. You can get some by getting a hold of the correct views at Hotmail.com. I gave him the idea. He made these awesome stickers. And you can get your own stickers by going to Sticker Junkie. Uh, give him a design idea. Let him know you heard about it from the correct views. Put it in your comment line. Attention, David Lake. And I promise you, you're going to get great stickers. And you're going to get a discount because you mentioned me. Uh, news.com.au in our last two stories here uh, those of you that like the science stuff before we get to our dumb D of the day and it's pretty dumb today I'm telling you it's rich you know I do the news from the science front if you don't I'm you do now I do it at uh, the media speaks.com every um, Saturday 2 p.m. we do the uh, Saturday edition you get live news on a Saturday not to rehash that Sean Hannity does because he's being lazy not the rehash that Rush does. Not a baseball game. No, you get live news on Saturdays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I always do the news from the science front. Well, I'm kind of backed up, and when that happens, then I move some science news onto my show, and that's what's happening now. <coughs> Researchers believe a biological revolution enabling humans to experience everlasting youthfulness is coming. Now, I'm not one of these technophobes that think that this is horrible news. There are some things I don't think you should do, like, oh, download your mind to the internet and then live off of it. I don't think you should get yourself chipped. I really don't. 
I think most thinking people would agree. But not I, I'm not one of these science phobes. And I like a lot of what I'm about to report on here. It says that it is likely that the first person who will live to be 1,000 years old is already alive today. And let's remember, in biblical times, this happened quite frequently. Um, one of the reasons was because there were no genetic imperfections in uh, the, human, the human species at that point. Uh, the more imperfections happen as a species carries on, the, the more likely it is that things uh, come up as inconsistencies, cell uh, damage and whatnot, diseases develop. Um, human beings sleeping with animals would do it. Um, you can also, there was some question in the Bible as to why they warned against races marrying. And I have always said that there is absolutely nothing wrong with races marrying in any way, shape, or form. I think originally the intermarrying of races may have led to some diseases such as sickle cell anemia. And there have been other people that have thought that. And it happens anytime more than one species intermarries, uh, uh, inter intermarries, has interracial sex. Sometimes uh, inconsistencies can develop. Does that mean I'm a racist? No. But I think that's why originally we were called to uh, stay with our own species, I think, because inconsistencies develop when you don't. In this day and age, it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Marry anybody you want to. Anything that's going to happen has already happened. But I've always thought that religions didn't say that because religion is inherently racist because I don't believe it is. I think that it may have been a warning. And there's other things that lead to uh, genetic inconsistencies that have nothing to do uh, with the early warnings. And again, I'm talking millions of years, thousands of years ago warnings. Uh, nuclear that we talked about earlier can be one thing to do it. Well, listen to this. It says, according to a growing regimen of researchers who believe a biological revolution enabling humans to experience everlasting youthfulness is just around the corner. At the epicenter of the research is Aubrey de Grey, a Cambridge gerontologist and co-founder of the California-based, it says OR, typo, it's uh, Strategies for Enlightened Negligible Sin Science. It sends. It's the Research Foundation there. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this world, word immortality because it's enormously damaging. And it's not just wrong. It's damaging, he told Motherboard. It means zero risk of death from any cause. Whereas I just work on one particular cause of death, namely aging. Mr. DeGray said that his research claims aims to undo the damage done by the wear and tear of life as opposed to stopping the aging process altogether. God bless him. If we ask a question, has the person been born who will live, who will be able to escape the ill health and old age indefinitely, then I would say the chances of that are very high, he said. Probably 80%. Wonderful news. To achieve longevity, DeGray is developing a therapy to kill cells that have lost the ability to divide, allowing healthy cells to multiply and replenish the tissue. <clears throat> the therapies that we are working on at the moment are not going to be perfect, he said. These therapies are going to be good enough to take middle-aged people, say people age 60, and rejuvenate them thoroughly enough so that they won't biologically be 60 again until they are chronologically 90. This is wonderful news. Even if it's small steps like that, wonderful news. It means we have essentially bought 30 years of time to figure out how to rejuvenate them when they are chronologically 90. So they won't be biologically 60 for a third time until they are 120 and 150. I like this man because he's not making promises that he can't keep. These are things that he's saying are going to happen in increments. And he's saying it's not going to be perfect. It may work for some people and not others. <coughs> it may depend exactly what it is that you have and what it is that you contract. And you might not be able to get rid of everything. Uh, this looks very doable to me because he's not over-promising. Lose 10 pounds! He's not doing that. Uh, Mr. DeGray explained his technique for achieving eternal youthfulness is far more likely to be developed before the theories explored by other gerontologists that focus on preventing the metabolism from causing damage to the body. We will be able to keep one step ahead of the problem and keep rejuvenating the same people as long as we like, he said. The big breakthrough in terms of publicity 
will be when we can take a middle-aged mouse in the laboratory and rejuvenate them. Once we can do that for mice, people are going to know that it's only a matter of time before we can do it to human beings. So keep an eye on mouse studies regarding this. It says, that's where I want to get into this, and I think we have a fair chance of getting in six or eight years from now. Friends, I am delighted to give you some good news like that. I really am. And unfortunately, I'm not delighted to give you what is, of course, the dumdy of the day. Oh my god! independent.co.uk the dumdy of the day friends that's right uh russia calls investigation into whether the u.s moon landing happened now do you understand that the u.s moon landings we know it happened because we have a beacon that was put up there that is still transmitting today and we didn't have the technology to put it up there prior to putting a man on the moon. We didn't put the probe up there and then say that it was a man. We didn't have the technology to do it. So now you've got these ridiculous notions coming, this time from Russia. And it's just another sign that Russia is is grabbing at straws here. Uh, him and Obama, as we've reported on ad nauseum, are in a never-ending pissing match to become the leader of the New World Order and uh, oppress the rights of everybody, no matter who wins. Well, now Russia has gone from questionable to just stupid and gets the dumdy ass of the day. Dumdy, dumdy of the day. The increasingly tense relationship between the United States and Russia might be about to face a new challenge, a Russian investigation into American moon landings. I didn't even believe I'm reporting on this. In an op-ed published by Russian newspaper Inzestia, Vladimir Markin, a spokesman for the government's official investigative committee, is this isn't some hack, well he might be, but he's a hack's got a position, argued that such an investigation could reveal new insights into the historical space journeys. My ass. Anybody who studied this at all and realizes right away that man very much